We have some bad news coming out of training camp, as I'm sure you can already tell by the title of today's freaking video. But we also have some good news, some exciting throws and clips that we saw from practices as well. But yes, obviously, Sean Slater has suffered an injury. Apparently, I mean, we don't know exactly what is going on, but it looks pretty obvious that he had something bothering him. He left with the trainers in practice early. We don't know the severity of what this injury is yet. He left practice, came back later, did some work with the trainers on the field. If this is a serious injury or something that just like lingers on for weeks, then that would it would just be awful for Rashawn because he has not been fully healthy since his rookie year in 2021. Like in 2022, he tore his bicep, only played in three games. And then just this past season, he had two different ankle sprains that he was playing through for the majority of the year still played like a franchise left tackle but you know he was injured and when Rashawn is healthy he is easily one of the best offensive linemen in the NFL he proved that during his rookie year but if this injury is something serious then he would have that injury prone label placed on him and that it would just really muddy things when you take into account that he is due to get another contract very soon. Another guy who got a contract, Christian Derisaw, he was in that same draft class as Rashawn Slater. Not as good of a left tackle as him, but he just got paid some pretty big money. And Rashawn Slater, he is entering his fourth year this season. He already has that fifth year option exercised by the team, but ideally you get that contract done with him as soon as possible because the price is only going to go up for a guy like Rashawn. But if he is seriously injured here or something that lingers, like I said, and he gets that injury prone, you know, label on him, then that makes things difficult in contract negotiations. And like I said, Rashawn Slater, one of the best in the game, but if he cannot stay on the field, that is a major problem. And I hope that this is nothing serious and he gets the full contract that he deserves and plays like the elite left tackle that he is for years to come for the Chargers. But if Rashawn Slater does happen to miss any sort of time, the Chargers had two different offensive line combinations once Rashawn was gone and they initially went with Jamar Sawyer at that left tackle spot. And that's probably because you're only moving around one guy. You just take out Rashawn and then you put in Jamar Sawyer. That's what they did in uh, 2022 when Rashawn tore his bicep. They just put, boom, put Jamar Sawyer in there at left tackle. And he was, at, he was pretty good. And they want to have as much continuity on that offensive line as possible. That's why they only uh, moved around one spot. Now, the offensive line combination that I would like to see in the second one that they went with was they moved Joe Alt to that left tackle spot and then they put in Jamari Sawyer at right guard and then had Trey Pipkins at right tackle. Now, if Rashawn Slater is gone, I would much rather see Joe Alt at left tackle than Jamari Sawyer. I think Jamari Sawyer, keep him at right guard where he played last year. Trey Pipkins, keep him at right tackle where he played last year. That offensive line combination, you're really also only just moving one guy because they, those other guys played those positions last year. They were in their same positions from last year. And when Rashawn Slater left, it, it did not stop this offense at all. Justin Herbert, he kept throwing darts. And we're going to see some clips later on. But I just want to talk about right now the rest of this bad news, okay? We also saw J.K. Dobbins, Donald Parham, and Praise Olatoke leave practice. We don't know whether or not they're injured or what, but J.K. Dobbins... He spoke to the media yesterday and he is excited to be here, expects big things from himself. And honestly, he is legitimately one of the best running backs in the NFL if he is healthy. So he should be very confident. And then also Joey Bosa, he had a very similar mindset to J.K. Dobbins, said very similar things. You know, people seem to forget about him because of injuries and things like that. But he believes that he is one of the best in the league when he is on the field and he wants to put the league on notice. Both of those guys, J.K. Dobbins and Joey Bosa, they're coming into this season with a lot to prove and their minds, they're in the right place. But now, okay, let's get to these clips. Let's get to the good stuff, the exciting stuff. Now, the first clip that we got here, first team offense going up against, it looks like the second team defense because you can see a lot of those uh, 
rotational players back there in the secondary you can see right here this is thomas harper undrafted free agent from notre dame at safety and then right here that's matt hankins the cornerback but zach hines getting a lot of work in with that first team offense you can tell this is justin herbert throwing the ball we also see brendan rice here getting some action in that first team offense stone smart as well but denzel perriman trying to get up and get that ball just perfectly placed right over the top of the linebacker before that safety gets there by justin herbert zach hines is one of those guys that once the pads get on you need to watch him closely and now we got the second team offense going up against this first team defense this ball goes to darius davis now he's gonna uh, under doing a little shimmy moves doing showing up that shiftiness man i like seeing that Darius Davis is a guy that I want to see get a lot of action in this offense, but also look at all the action in the stands right here. Tons of fans. This place is crowded. Oh, Chargers social media team cameraman right there. Also the ref the shorts a little, uh, a little tight, but anyway, Darius Davis showing off that shiftiness man and that second team offense. And you can see it looks like he probably would have been tackled by Dayon Henley right here. I know Jim Harbaugh is telling these guys, look, we don't want to have that high tempo, you know, really, really fast pace yet because we don't want to get injured. And look, all of these guys, they're letting up, obviously, at that point. Lohi Gilman, Sante Samuel Jr. probably would not have made that tackle at that point if he got that far because we saw how he played last season. But hopefully this year, he's going to have a resurgence. Just needs to tackle a little bit better, but Darius Davis showing off that shiftiness, man. I love it. Now we got a really deep pass by Easton Stick to Simi Fahoko against this first team defense. Really nice catch there by Simi Fahoko. And also looking away that DB, I think it was Cam Hart, but looking slow motion. Pretty good pass as well. He kind of lets that ball get into him like we saw Quentin Johnson do yesterday, but he's able to make that catch. Looks like Cam Hart right there just kind of got lost with that ball tracking. But Simi Fajoko, man, is a guy that might honestly make this roster if he continues to play well in the preseason. We saw some good action from him in OTAs as well. Keep an eye on him. Now, speaking of Quentin Johnston, we got another play, another video, another Quentin Johnston highlight. And there it is. He's actually using his hands to catch that ball. You can see, let me play it back in slow motion. Those are, those are hands, okay? I know the gloves are covering it, but there are hands underneath that. And he's reaching out. Really nice adjustment to the ball. Gets both feet down and that knee down. Totally inbounds against Zamari Walton, the undrafted free agent cornerback from Ole Miss. Now, let me put up this angle because as you can see, first of all, this is against, you know, second team defense or even third team, but really nice adjustment, really nice use of his hands. The one thing that I will say about this clip is that Zamari Walton, the DB here, is just not even really trying to go for this ball it is a nice throw by justin herbert as well because we talk about that ball location it is on the other side of where that db is so it's tougher for him to contend but back to this angle and you can see he's kind of you know listening to jim harbaugh he's not really giving it his all just kind of walking looking at quentin johnson making that catch and he's like okay I'm not competing for that ball. Now we got a big highlight from DJ Chark. This is second team offense. That was Easton Stick throwing that ball. DJ Chark, really nice adjustment to the ball right there. Again, over Cam Hart, the DB rookie from Notre Dame. You can see from this angle, we got a better view of it. He's just one-on-one -on, -one on DJ Chark. No safety help, hello? I think that's AJ Finley not giving him help over the top. Looks like maybe he was expecting some help over the top. Just kind of lost that ball when it was in the air. And, uh, you know, that's the second pass that we've seen on Cam Hart where he just kind of loses the ball in the air like that. Pretty late with that hand trying to swipe it away. But nice throw and nice catch to DJ Chark. Really like that, mm, man, getting those hands out there, using his length to his advantage uh this is just nice it's just freaking nice man you guys want to see some brendan rice because we finally got a nice catch from brendan rice boom right over the shoulder deep pass from max duggan so these are the backups but you can see this db was kind of draped all over him and he's able to just let that ball go right into oh my gosh that was perfectly placed by max duggan i gotta give him credit but really nice catch in stride by brendan rice getting that one 
two feet inbounds, and that is a deep pass catch for Brendan Rice. Nice action that we're seeing from him. Let's see how he does in the preseason. And that is everything that you need to know, but also you need to know how good Justin Herbert has been in training camp so far.